Hello and welcome to the episode 301 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we'll see Brian Epstein first taking notice of the Beatles, the Beatles getting their first spot in a package tour, and the continuation of the Beatles' 1963 Swedish tour. On the 28th of October 1960, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed another night at the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany, alternating on the stage with Rory Storm and the Hurricanes, another Liverpool group. One year later, in 1961, Raymond Jones, one of the younger customers of the NAMS shop in Whitechapel, Liverpool, walked into the shop with an unusual request. Rather than his usual country and western discs, he was especially fond of Carl Perkins, Jones asked the staff for a single called My Bunny by an unknown band, the Beatles. As it happens, Jones was served by Brian Epson, whose family ran the shop. Years later, after becoming the manager of the Beatles, Epstein maintained that this was the first time he had heard about the band. After Jones's request, Brian decided to look into the band and ordered 200 copies of My Bunny through Polydor Records. The single sold moderately well in Liverpool, mostly to Beatles fans, that were disappointed to find out that the band acted only as a backing to Tony Sheridan. It was perhaps this reaction plus the surprising quantity of Mercy Beat copies sold in his shop, that made Epstein willing to check the Beatles out at the Cavern Club, as we will see in episode 313 of this podcast. In the evening, the Beatles, with Paul McCartney now on bass and still featuring Pete Best on drums, performed at the Aintree Institute in Liverpool. On the 28th of October 1962, Brian Epstein, now managing the Beatles, called the home of Arthur Hose, one of UK's leading promoters. Brian had discovered the number by chance, and he intended to convince Hose to book the band for one of his famous package shows, promoting a number of acts in all the major variety theatres and cinemas with a stage throughout the country. After hearing Epstein's usual pitch, now enriched with the band's recent charting records, Hose decided to book the Beatles for an upcoming tour, headed by Helen Shapiro, plus for an extra night in his hometown of Petersboro, to check them out in advance. While the Beatles' fee was to be a meager £30 per night for the whole group, about £650 in 2020 money, Epstein was so grateful for the chance that he offered Hose the first option on all future Beatles tours, something that he would come to regret further down the line. That night, the Beatles performed at the Empire Theatre in Liverpool during the first pop package show organised by NEMS, the first time they were on the bill without any other local band, and the second time they shared the stage with Little Richard. In addition to performing their own set, the Beatles, now featuring Ringo Starr on drums, backed solo singer Craig Douglas. For the occasion, Nams had tried to book Sam Cooke as a surprise guest, but the soul giant was not available. One year later, in 1963, the Beatles were in Boras, Sweden, signing records at a local record shop in the afternoon, and then, later, performing at the Boras Hallen for a 7.30 pm show, part of their Swedish tour. In 1964, the Beatles were engaged with another tour, this time of Britain. For the occasion, they played two shows at the ABC Cinema in Exeter. After the concert, before celebrating around town the 36th birthday of their driver, Alf Bicknell, the Fabs were interviewed by Playboy. The piece, issued in February 1965, touched very briefly upon the music side of the band and investigated their views on money, religion, sex, politics and race. 
they seem to care the most about money and sex, if you need to know. Finally, on this date in 1965, between 5 and 5.30 pm, a mono mixdown of We Can Work It Out was completed in Abbey Road. The mix was intended for the Beatles' mimed performance during the filming of an upcoming TV special, the music of Lennon and McCartney, but on hearing it, the band realized that the vocal track needed more work, making the mixing useless for further purposes. Before wrapping things up, it's time to remind you to visit www.simonmas.com support to see how you can ease my work on more and better music-related content, and acquire the NFTs of the deluxe version of this podcast, with hours of extra content. Thank you for any help you might want to give me, and see you tomorrow! For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.